everyone, welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I am your host Rebecca Felgate and I've been away for a few days with some friends enjoying the summer sun. It's been glorious. But I am back in action and ready to give you the creeps. So what's new basically? You clicked it so you already know what's going on. This is the top 10 mysterious people in history part 4. You guys can't get enough of it and actually I'm pretty thrilled because I love history and mystery. They rhyme, it ain't no crime. Okay, before we get into this video, I want to know who your favourite historical figure is. Or, if that's too broad for you, why don't you let me know your favourite period of history and we can all pretend that I didn't just spit while saying that. Surprise! One of my favourite people in history is Cleopatra, especially because I love ancient Egypt. Although I would say that my favourite period of history is Europe from the 1920s to the end of World War II. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, I always love reading them. While you're down there also leave a thumbs up on this video and if you want to check out our most amazing Instagrams there are links in the description box. Stick around to the end! because I said so. Coming in at number 10 we have John Doe 24. I only recently discovered that John Doe is America's way of saying like a generic man. In the UK we have a saying that goes a bit like every Tom, Dick or Harry, although they aren't popular names anymore. So anyway, John Doe number 24, let me tell you about him. This was the name given to a mysterious teenager who was found walking the streets of Jacksonville in Illinois in October 1945. The teen was deaf and was unable to speak or even use sign language. The only thing he seemed to actually be able to do was write his name. Lewis. Sadly a judge sent him to a mental health institute where he was given the name John Doe 24 as he was the 24th person to enter the system, nameless. Despite institutions being brutal in their day, he made quite the impression. He was said to have been a cheerful man and loved dancing and laughing, don't we all? He died in 1993 after decades as a nameless man in the system. On his death, no one was any closer to discovering who he was. Coming in at number 9 we have Laurie Erica Ruff or Laurie Kennedy or Becky Sue or I mean I guess who knows right? Laurie! Can we make that rhyme with mystery? I don't know. I feel like we can give it a good go. Laurie. Mystery. Anyway, I digress. Laurie was kind of an oddball. She was married to a guy called Blake and they had a child, but she wouldn't let any of his family hold her. She was so strange, she'd do weird things like ask for an easy bake oven for Christmas even though she was 40, although I have to say that isn't the worst thing in the world, like let the woman bake. It's also reported that she loved a nap, which I'm also actually okay with. Throughout her marriage to Blake, she kept a lockbox which she instructed him never to open. Laurie had started becoming very, very strange when Blake asked for a divorce. Sadly, after a few very intense months, she was on a big downward spiral and ended up ending her own life. After her death, the lockbox was finally opened and it revealed some drama. It seems that Laurie Erica Ruff used to be Laurie Kennedy, who used to be Becky Sue Turner, but the only Becky Sue Turner her age had died age 2 in a fire in Fife, Washington. Laurie got a new social security number and also in the box were mysterious scribblings saying very strange things like 402 months and North Hollywood police. What does it all mean? No one has ever yet cleared up the mystery of who she was, and they may never. Never. Coming in at number 8 we have the Count of Saint Germain. Was this man a saint? Was he a count? Was he immortal? It seems that he simply appeared in French court one day and the rest as they say is history. The Prince of Denmark thought that he was one of the greatest philosophers who ever lived, so here's a picture of him so you can get a visual. The chap in question was born either in 1691 or 1712, the exact date is unclear. He did however die in 1784 but at times he would make claims like he was 500 years old or he even claimed to be immortal sometimes. He said he was the Prince of Transylvania. Famous French writer Voltaire sarcastically dubbed him the Wonder Man but honestly I'm uncertain he deserved that level of sad. He was pretty wonderful. Despite being unaccounted for, the Count of Saint Germain was well educated and wealthy, and that money had to come from somewhere. He wrote music, spouted philosophy, spoke several languages, he was a hit with the ladies. He eventually became an advisor to the king. He died without ever marrying, he had no children and no surviving heirs. Not that he had any fortune, if he ever had one. Nothing was discovered, just, you know, him. 
dead. Coming in at number 7, one of my favourite historical figures, we have Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla was a Croatian Serbian American creator known for his work with electricity. He also had a cracking moustache. As talented as he was, he was quite mysterious and it seems that there probably was someone out there to get him. Perhaps it was all of the unpaid hotel bills he left behind him. He was an eccentric. Nikola developed a technology that was able to give people free energy, allegedly. He built the Wardenclyffe Tower or Tesla Tower in 1901 and he was planning on using it to transmit images across the Atlantic from New York to England using Earth to conduct signals. Now, The long and short of it was that he wanted to give people free electricity but his funding was mysteriously stopped and his plans were mysteriously destroyed. It was rumoured that he was up for a Nobel Prize in his time but that too was mysterious mysteriously hindered. Odd. Very odd. He indeed was an odd man anyway. He claimed to only ever sleep two hours a night and what he did with the rest of the time? Well, it is said that he used to feed pigeons at midnight in New York. One night he was off to feed the pigeons and he was run over on his way to do so. After his death his entire estate was quickly shipped to Belgrade on the insistence of his nephew. Fun fact about Nikola Tesla, he curled his toes 100 times each per foot per night, claiming that it, I quote, stimulated his brain cells. I'm gonna try that. How does one curl a toe though? Little toes. Coming in at number 6 we have the Watcher. This is an active mystery that continues today. Who is the Watcher of New Jersey? Many people presume it's a man but special studies of their handwriting have suggested it could be a woman. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let me tell you the story. Around 5 years ago in 2014, a couple in New Jersey purchased their dream home at 657 Boulevard for 1.4 million US dollars. Before they even had the chance to celebrate and crack the champagne, they started receiving weird letters signed from The Watcher. I'm sorry, who? Good question, but one that still doesn't have an answer. The first letter they received read, Dearest neighbour, allow me to welcome you to the neighbourhood. 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now and as it approaches its 110th birthday, I've been in charge of watching and waiting for a second coming. The first letter stated that the writer had asked the previous owners to move out to fill the home with, I quote, young blood. Creepy. Delving deep into the past, it does seem like the house was once sold for a dollar in the 1950s, which is pretty curious. The couple the current owners bought the property off, the Wood family, wanted a quick sale. In the watcher's first note to the new family, they made reference to the couple's children. They said, once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them out. Then in later letters, the watcher asked who was occupying what bedroom. They claimed that they liked to be able to track the family as they moved through the house. It seems that the Watcher was actually one in a long line of mysterious watchers. In their first letter they wrote, My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s and my father watched in the 1960s. It's now my time. I've been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. I mean what? The buyers freaked out, which I totally understand, and they even started a lawsuit to sue the Wood family who sold it to them. They accused them of hiding information about the voyeur. The most recent update of this story is actually the couple who received the letters and made the whole story public have finally sold the house, but at a loss. The police still have no idea who the watcher could be. Coming into number 5, we have Christopher Marlowe. I love a bit of Christopher Marlowe action, I really do. Dear Kit, is supposedly a historical figure from Shakespearean times. He was thought to be a great friend of William Shakespeare, although some say Shakespeare stole his work and others say that Marlowe could have been the bard himself, masquerading under a different name. Christopher Marlowe was said to be outrageously attractive and a very hard partier. Hats off to him. He unfortunately was murdered aged 29, a sadness which is resounded across Shakespeare's work. In his short years, Christopher Marlowe made quite the impression. He disappeared from Cambridge University for nearly a year and he returned 32 weeks later to demand his Master of the Arts degree, which he was given. 
He was once arrested in the Netherlands for counterfeiting coins, but he was bailed out, and he may or may not have been involved in murdering an innkeeper's son. Despite being the son of a shoemaker, he became a favourite in Queen Elizabeth's court, which is why he got away with so much. Some say he was indeed a spy for the Queen. He was killed in a brawl, or so the story goes. Many people think that it was a planned attack. Christopher Marlowe was reportedly buried in an unmarked grave. Curious. Ah, uh, coming into number four, we've got Casanova. Casanova, bro, what's your secret? Well, that, my friends, is a mystery. You may have heard of the term Casanova, which generally means a man popular with the ladies. However, Casanova was indeed a real person. Born in 1725 and died in 1798, Casanova was an Italian adventurer who was the OG playboy of the Western world, although there are rumours that he was a Venetian spy, which actually is a rumour he perpetuated himself. Casanova was reported to have seduced over 130 prominent women, a handful of men. He invented the lottery in France and helped Mozart write the libretto to Don Giovanni. How Casanova managed to woo so many people and be so famous, how he managed to invent so many successful get rich schemes, how he lived such a high drama life, I mean, the guy escaped from prison at one point. Honestly, it's a pure mystery. Casanova was morally dubious, although this was the 1700s. He wrote a book called Histoire de ma vie, Story of My Life, and it is well regarded as one of the best autobiographies of all time. His book, amongst others, has honestly inspired me to write my own. Casanova. What a lad. Coming in at number three, we have Marika Rock. How Marika Rock made a comeback after being associated with Adolf Hitler? Well, that's certainly a mystery. Marika was born in Egypt, but was of Hungarian nationality. However, she made her name as a dancer, singer, and film actress in Nazi Germany. It's rumoured that she was a lover of both Joseph Goebbels and Adolf Hitler, although the latter is less likely. Nonetheless, she was a powerful woman in the Third Reich, and after the war, she was banned from the stage for two years. She was labelled a disgrace. Somehow, she managed to claw her way back into favour though, and quickly became one of Europe's most famous actresses. In 1948, she received the prestigious German Bambi Media Award. All seemed to be forgiven. It was later revealed that actually, she was a very successful spy for the Russians, or Soviets as they had been. It's also suggested that she may have been involved in killing a few people. I honestly feel like there needs to be a movie about this woman. I can't speak Hungarian or German, but aside from that, I would love to play her. So, casting directors, I'm your gal. Yeah. Coming in at number two, we have the Pied Piper of Hamelin. No, it's not a fairy tale. It turns out that the Pied Piper of Hamelin was real, and yes, he did seem to spirit away a bunch of kids. The popular fairy tale says that the town of Hamelin was infested with rats when a colourful clothed man turned up and said that he would get rid of them for payment. Except he was never paid, so in a fit of rage, he stole the town's children and led them through a mountain. Only, well, did this actually happen? Surviving town records from the Church of Hamelin in Germany say, and I quote, In the year of 1284, on the day of St. John's and Paul on June 26th, by a piper clothed in many kinds of colours, 130 children born in Hamelin were seduced and lost at the place of execution near the Copen. It's actually thought that the children were taken as part of a children's crusade, and that the whole business with the rats was added later as some kind of explanation. Some even say that the real piper was a paedophile who abducted children in their sleep. Suffice to say, he and the children were never found. What a mystery. The ultimate mystery at number one, we have Nostradamus. Michel de Nostradamus, short de Nostradamus for us, was a notable French astrologer, doctor, occultist and seer. I love a good seer. He was born in France in 1503 and he died relatively short life in 1566. The man was expelled from university for his work as an apothecary, which is pretty witchy and I like it. Nostradamus is best known for his book Le Prophecy, which he predicted future events, many of which have 
actually come true. Some of the prophecies people identify as being true are the death of King Henry II of France, the Great Fire of London, the French Revolution, the discovery of pasteurization, the rise of Hitler, the success of Charles de Gaulle, the atomic bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, the assassination of JFK and 9-11, just to name a few. Prophecies yet to come true are zombies rising from the grave, mega droughts in North America, a weakened west, catastrophic earthquakes and World War 3. Oh, and there's a chap called Mabus who signals the end of the world. Cool. Thanks Nostradamus. Where is he getting his information? I need more information, but I won't get any because it's a good old fashioned mystery. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That was the top 10 mysterious people in history part 4. Would you like a part 5? I would greatly oblige. Perhaps give me some suggestions in the comment section down below as who you think should be on that list. Leave me a comment, I love them. Leave me a thumbs up, I love them too. Thumbs are just, I don't know, good shapes right? I'm your host Rebecca Felgate. Check out the links in the description box for further information on our sources and of course links to our most amazing Instagrams. We've got a whole playlist so stick around but until next time I'll see you guys soon. Bye!